Genesis 15, 6, Abraham trusted in God. Hebrews 11, 1, faith is the essence of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 3, by faith we understand. Let us pray. Holy One of old, open our eyes that we may see. Amen. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I think about it every night and day. Spread my wings and fly away. I believe I can soar. I see me running through that open door. I believe I can fly. What do you believe this morning? I know that we shall recite some of our commonly held beliefs in the creed after the sermon, but what else do you believe? What do you believe that other folk call cray? You know, cray is when you've gone all the way past crazy and just kept going. <laughs> what do you believe? I'm not asking what or who do you believe in, because that is not the limit of what faith is about in Scripture. There are folk who wear their belief in Jesus like a t-shirt. They are Team JCZ, and like good sports fans, trash talk about all the other teams. That is not faith. That is fandom. What? Do you believe? But before you tell me, show me. Genesis says that Abraham trusted in God. You know the Hebrew word for that kind of trusting faith already. It is the root of the word amen. Abraham said yes and amen to everything God said. But belief is more than just words. And so, as she tells the story, the author of Hebrews writes, you do know I'm not the only scholar who thinks that Priscilla wrote the epistle to the Hebrews. She writes in verse 8, by faith Abraham obeyed. In verse 9, by faith he stayed. In verse 10, he looked. In verse 11, he received. Abraham didn't just believe, think, or feel. He got up and got busy. And he got busy too. Faith is the evidence. That's a legal term for proof in Greek. And Abraham proved his faith with his actions. What do you believe, Abraham? Watch and I'll show you. So what do you believe, church? What are you showing the world about your faith in God? Now, whether the author of Hebrews was a woman or not, she probably wasn't a feminist. Oh, sure, she mentioned Sarah, but the rest of her exemplars were men. And if you read the whole chapter, especially the end, when she brings this sermon home, she includes some men whose supposed faithfulness includes abusing and even killing women. But that's next week's sermon, and I'll be on the road again. <laughs> this week, our exemplars in the faith are Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and Jacob. What do you believe? Don't tell me, show me. I believe the faith of biblical women, even if it was in a God their men said was male like them, is a faith I can't live without in a world that still marginalizes women and girls, allowing us to be snatched off the streets and thrown into dungeons, used and abused with no one looking for us if we're not the right sort of girl from the right sort of family. But I believe God is our God too, and I believe God cares about our stories even when the media doesn't. 
I believe. I believe in, trust in, hope in the God of Hagar, Keturah, Rebecca, Rachel, Leah, Bilhah, and Zilpah. Because of their faith, their amens, and their actions in the God of Israel, in spite of every good reason to choose another path. Even the stories that tell their stories don't always tell their side of the story. They're too busy telling the stories of the men and how God used them to tell their stories. But this morning, I'm going to do a little womanist midrash and fill in some of the blanks in our faith stories. And for those of you who don't know, womanism is the richer, deeper companion to feminism like purple is to lavender. And Midrash is classical and contemporary Jewish interpretation of the scriptures asking questions and filling in the blanks when need be. So I believe this morning in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But I also believe in the God of Hagar, Sarah, Keturah, Rebekah, Rachel, Leah, Bilhah, and Zilpah. How those three brothers line up with all those women is a whole nother sermon. Their stories teach me about faith. And even though they weren't good enough, for the author of Hebrews, with the exception of Sarah, you know, the acceptable token, you know how we do. We have a committee of all men, and then we put one woman on it, and we say that it's balanced. In spite of those stories, there is a story about faith here. You see, Hagar believed in God in spite of what Sarah said, and it was her idea. Hagar believed in spite of Sarah's claim that she and Abraham were entitled to use Hagar's body without her consent to secure their piece of the promise. Hagar believed in God in spite of Sarah and Abraham's faith in a God who said it was all right to rape their slaves. You see, sometimes faith requires believing in spite of the stuff that religious folks say and do. And we need to check Abraham and Sarah on what they felt entitled to do in the name of their religion. See, calling out God's name doesn't give you a free pass to do whatever it is you think you want to do. Keturah was Abraham's other, other woman and baby mama. And she had to believe God because Abraham's notion of child support was trifling. Abraham left her a couple of presents one time. Genesis 25, 6 says, to the sons of his other women, Abraham gave gifts while he was still living. Then he sent them away. But Keturah believed that God would make a way out of no way and no child support. And six of Abraham's sons were raised up by that woman on her own. God did it. God took care of her. And one of her grandsons was named Sheba. And one of his descendants was a sister queen who turned Solomon's head and turned that brother out. Out. <laughs> Rebecca believed God. She believed in God when she struggled with a high risk pregnancy and later when she struggled with her parenting because one of her sons was always at the other one's throats. And she wasn't perfect by any means. She took sides. She chose one over the other, but God believed in her and used her anyway. You see, one of the things I believe is that you don't have to be perfect to be used by God. God does not write us off when we make mistakes. Oh, Rachel believed in God. She believed while she waited for her promised husband, while her wedding day was ruined, when her father betrayed her, while she watched her beloved marry her sister, and when she finally got her man, he kept going back to her sister's bed, even though he already had an heir and a spare. 
even though he kept telling her she was the one he loved. And Rachel believed God for a child. And when God gave her an heir and a spare, her first long-awaited child disappeared from her life. She didn't know if he was living or dead. And then her husband had the nerve to send her baby, the only child she had left, off to a foreign land. But Rachel believed in God. She believed that God was able to bring back her son. And not only did God send back her baby home, but God even sent back her elder son, the son she thought was dead and God gone. God answered the prayer of Rachel and Rachel believed in God. Leah, Rachel's sister, believed in God. She had to believe in God who made her in God's own image in spite of what everybody said. Because you see, people said that Re Leah wasn't pretty like Rachel. Leah had to believe that she was God's daughter no matter what the magazine photos looked like, no matter what the media said a good woman looks like. She had to believe that she was God's daughter and she was fine just the way she was. Oh, Leah's father used her to betray her sister and everybody was talking about it and half the folk in town were mad at her and the other half felt sorry for her. Leah had to go through her life being married to this man who kept coming back to her bed and then getting up and telling everybody that she wasn't the one he really loved. Leah had to believe that there was love in God enough for her and God blessed her with a family of children to raise and parent better than she was parented. Bilhah was Rachel's maid and I believe that Bilhah believed in God even though she found herself enslaved to Rachel's father passed down to Rachel like a family heirloom and then turned over to Jacob to impregnate because Rachel didn't have enough faith to wait on God. Or perhaps Bilhah couldn't see her way clear to have faith in the God of her enslavers and abusers. And when Bilhah was an old woman, Leah's son Reuben, whom she had known since he was a little boy, he raped her too. Yet I would like to believe that Bilka had the same kind of faith that our enslaved ancestors had, that it doesn't matter what you do to us or our children, we are free in God. You can touch our bodies, but not our souls. You can kill us like dogs in the street, but there is a God of justice who sits high and looks low. Vengeance is mine, says God, whose name is holy. Zilpah, Leah's maid, had to believe there was a God somewhere because Leah turned her over to be impregnated to out of spite. Oh, the faith stories of Israel are full of the good, the bad, the ugly, the dirty, the nasty, the crazy, and the cray to the cray. Maybe you think your faith story doesn't count this morning. Maybe the author of Hebrews wouldn't think your story was good enough to be told in the stories of the church folk. You know, there are some people who think we shouldn't talk about sex and violence, rape and murder, hurt and pain, death and disease, grief and depression in church. But church is real. Oh, but faith. Faith says bring it all to God because God can handle it. God will handle it with you. God will handle it for you. Only believe. Believe that God can bring you through and deliver you from harm. God can. And sometimes God will, but also know that faith doesn't mean that you won't have sorrow or pain or grief or even have a horrific act of violence visited on your person. Real faith says that even if the worst should happen, God will be right there with you and will bring you through. Let me leave you with what might sound like strange advice. Listen to the voices in your head. 
Listen to the voices in your heart. Listen and follow the voice of God with your behind, with your feet, with your hands, with your mouth. The faithful folk of Scripture didn't just wear their faith on donkey bumper stickers. They got up and followed God and walked with God and spoke with God and spoke for God and sometimes died for God. Faith without works is dead. Belief without action is invalid. If you believe in God, get up and do something. Believe in God. Believe God about you. Believe God about the world. Believe God against the opposition. Believe God against the world. Believe God and trust in God. Trust God's yeses and amens. I don't know about you, but I have a personal soundtrack. I believe I can fly. And I believe that God used R. Kelly in spite of the horrific violence and degradation he rained down on God's daughters. And I believe we need to tell the truth and hold folk accountable at all times. And I believe that none of us is all bad or all good. Sometimes when I'm out walking, particularly if there's a body of water nearby, I play Donald Lawrence. Oh, Peter, walk out on the water. And I hear Jesus saying to me as he says in that song, I am Mary's baby. Don't you be afraid. Walk out on the water. Don't be afraid. That's my shouting song, church. Finally, when I need to hear God sing to me, I play Lena Horne singing, believe in yourself as I believe in you from the whiz. If you believe, I know you will, believe in yourself right from the start. You'll have brains, you'll have a heart, you'll have courage to last your whole life through. If you believe in yourself as I believe in you. What do you believe, church? Don't let anybody tell you. You, your faith, or your story don't count. Believe. Amen.